it's Tuesday night and it's Soul Circle. There'll be people going back and forth in the background because it's an exciting week with my son Benny's bar mitzvah. So there's a lot going on and a lot of people in my home. Um, but I wanted to show you, I went to a special artist jeweler in town and I spoke to him, he's a Kohen or a priest, high priest tribe person, and they're filled with a lot of light and holiness, and he meditates on God's names and carves out things from silver and gold and jewelry. Um, his name is Daron Kohen, and he's an artist here in Spot. So because it was gonna be an exciting week for Benny, my son who's being bar mitzvahed and he's a miracle boy and we're getting all ready and there's a lot of mitzvahs involved in that. Um, and it was coming upon Shavuos, which is such a high time that I just decided to go up to the artist section and um, of course buy myself a gift because I was going there. But I went all the way to the last place and um, I spoke to him about his life, the artist. How did he come to be in Svat after being in Jerusalem? How did he end up deciding he wanted to have a store? He said, well, my friend, the mayor of Svat, asked me for a gift for Madonna in the neighboring town, Rosh Pina. And I gave him one of my medallions to give to her. I said, but I realized that you're so blessed that it isn't your lucky that Madonna put on one of your creations. It's that she's lucky that she got to wear one of the, the creations from a Kohen or a high priest. So this was the one showing it to you that I bought myself. Let's see if I can get it to stop swinging. And if you look at it, I guess no matter which way you put it, I'm get it so it doesn't shine on you. Um, it's about the size of a quarter, but even it looks really cool reflected. Um, and he works, obviously, with Kabbalistic Zohar principles. And I just felt like, wow, that's like moving around like a Merkava. And really the word Merkava, it means chariot. So it says Ezekiel went up in a chariot. He didn't go into the earth. Um, he went up in a chariot of fire. And Eliyahu Hanavi was that kind of person. And Pinchas, who killed, you know, people who were doing inappropriate things in the name of Hashem, you know, to fight for God's name and represent Hashem. He also didn't die. So what is a Merkava? What is a chariot? So I'm showing you this from the Kohen because it has the movement. Um, if you could imagine the two triangles spinning and inside the power of the light and the energy pulling you in. Um, if you could close your eyes and imagine, imagine a triangle of light surrounding you so that at the top of your head down to the ground is one triangle under your feet and then if you raised your arms up and you made for yourself like the second part of the triangle so let me try that so you raised your arms up in a v and it came down in a point and that went across and that's the second triangle of light and you imagine the triangle spinning, the light triangle spinning, and you're in the center. And you are made, your head is made of the yud, your body is made of the hay, your middle part of your body is made of the vav, and your legs also open, represent, you know, standing like maybe a foot width part, represent a hay. That your whole body is the yud k vav k in light. And you're standing with your consciousness inside these spinning triangles of light with your heart light beaming out from the middle. 
and you have the consciousness of engraving God's name inside your mind, your moach, your consciousness. And there's something called remote viewing or psychonavigation where inside your third eye, inside your mind, you can really travel where you would like to travel. So there are people who are really good at this. They've practiced this. The idea was from the time of Shavuos when we received the Torah on Mount Sinai, that the Torah in its transmission of light got passed down orally to the prophets and to uh, the Sanhedrin, like the great assembly. And the first person, I believe, uh, Moshe transmitted the keys to the Merkava or the chariot in terms of going up in meditation into these high places was Yehoshua, was Joshua. So, you know, he's the one who took the people into the land. Now, why wasn't Moses the one to cross over and go into the land? Was he was really so high, he was really so um, existing in a spiritual realm that he almost couldn't come into the physical realm and root into the physical realm. And therefore he had to pass on his something called kohot or his powers of prophecy and his keys to the chariot. He had to pass them to someone who was physical, to Yehoshua, to Joshua. And Joshua led the people into the promised land. Now, of course, I bought this pendant and I immediately started singing and dancing around. And my husband said to me, what's going on with you? You know, you're singing and dancing. And I showed him this pendant and I said, it's really affecting my heart. I feel like I'm inside the power and protection of the Star of David. And it, it has six points and it's a shield of protection because um, the angels surround us on all the different sides, above us, below us, to the right of us, to the left of us, in front of us, and in back of us. And those are the six directions of the protection. Well, when I came home, I don't know if he got jealous. I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he was thinking, hey, she's in a really good mood. She's dancing around. Something has affected her. I'm going to go up there to visit my friend um, who works at Daron Cohen and see what's going on. And I couldn't really decide between two of the pendants. Now, he had no idea which ones I had looked at. He only knew the one I ended up getting for myself. And he comes home later in the day and he says, honey, I have a special gift. And he brings me this pendant which it's really amazing. I just wanted to give to the Kohen and do a mitzvah, you know, and support his livelihood. And, okay, I love the pendant. Um, but my husband came back with this pendant, which is a different energy. If you really look at it, it's a different energy. It's kind of more ancient. It's similar. Um, but it's almost like a star within a star. And then all the triangle points where it's connecting, um, you see many things as if you could go look into it, like this is the top and go into it. You can see it almost start spinning. In the middle, there's another star and it feels like spinning. And it's really, really special. So you're like, oh, that's just like the other one, only bigger. No. So now I was so excited. My husband did this. And I was like, what could I have possibly done to deserve two presents? One I gave myself, but one that my husband gave me. So now I'm going to put them, see the difference in the design and the energy. And they're both above my heart, which is making me really, you know, 
spin. I was dancing, I was singing. Um, but you can see the difference in the design. You see how, do you see it? Similar, but not quite. But anyway, okay, enough of those. Except that that's what gave me the idea. As soon as I put them on, I said, you know what I'm gonna teach Soul Circle about? I'm gonna teach about the Merkava. Now, we all feel like we want to meditate or um, feel close to Hashem. But these were actual keys and gateways that were taught inside Kabbalah. And they were taught and passed down from generation to generation in oral Torah. And then when we felt we were gonna be killed by the Romans, we actually wrote it down. Um, we did that so that it wouldn't go out of existence. And even though it was in people's consciousness and a lot of it was hidden wisdom, we wanted it to be written down in existence um, just in case. Now, the two, the word Kabbal or Kibbal or Kabbalah is from the root um, receive, to receive. So what are we really receiving? So people are like, oh, it's receiving wisdom. Yes, it's receiving wisdom of the Torah. But what are we receiving? We're being open to receive prophecy. So what does that mean? You know, are we all a, a bunch of Nostradamuses walking around? Like, who would be listening? We'd be saying, you know, what we're receiving the message, but don't we need someone to receive the message from us? Like, if we, we were a generation of prophets at one time, but we needed someone to speak to and be a receptacle for our prophecy of what we were going to say. So it wasn't that we were always receiving information and wisdom from Hashem and from, excuse me, engaging with Torah. We were also giving messages to the people. And we were open to receive the messages in order to uplift and help the Jewish people. Now here we are in this generation of the internet, of the phones, of the devices, and I know I said this the last time we got together uh, on my video and you received my video in the Soul Circle. I don't know how many people have watched it since I said it, but you could read that one. You could watch that one and then you could watch this one. But you go into a room and everybody's on their devices. One's on a computer, one's on an iPad, one's on their iPhone. I, 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 me, 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 but really we need to join. And um, that's why I call this soul circle. Because I wanted our souls to imagine that we were sitting in a circle learning from each other. We tried tonight to get someone on so that we could have like a breakthrough of someone listening by video. Um, Rachel, it's a shout out to you because you tried. You said you were waiting, but I don't see you on this. I guess you couldn't click on the link. We will get there, but right now we're just video streaming. Um, so it seems quite one way for me, although I'm speaking to you guys as if you're all sitting in a room or we're all sitting in a room together. But let's just say we're sitting in um, a soul circle of our consciousness. And we're all spinning inside the Merkava. And we want to go deeply into Hashem because one, we want to experience the light. Two, we want to experience ourselves as light. And one of the best ways to do that is that says the eyes are the window to the soul. Your eye looking into the toe, your eyes, usually 
I should say your eye, your eyes, reading and looking into the Torah and studying words of Torah, purifies your sight, elevates your soul. You're engaging with the creator since he made the Torah and he put God's self, she put herself into the Torah. So God's energy, he, she, mother, father, all knowing, all being, put God's self into the Torah so that when you learn and your eyes read, which your eyes and what's in the back of your eye goes to your brain stem and your brain registers the creator into the brain. Now, I know people have been to healing seminars and self-help seminars and meditations and Reiki circles and different things where they've closed their eyes and imagined themselves. <laughs> Alice Abalafi, I saw you added a photo. <laughs> You're laughing? She's listening, but she's putting up the photos of Eretz HaKodesh, my good friend from Florida, came for Bendy's Bar Mitzvah, my friend Chaya Abulafia, from Chaim Abulafia and Avraham Abulafia, one of the greatest Makubalim, who was considered the Mashiach of his generation and this holy family, and she has come to Israel, and she's excited. Now, really and truly, we want to have that experience of the light, but are we in receiver mode? What is more comfortable? And especially as women, are we more comfortable giving or are we more comfortable receiving? So for sure, we're more comfortable giving. We, does it say, oh, we're here to receive birth? No. It says we're here to give birth. Are we here to um, receive tzedakah? Sometimes, but mostly we're giving tzedaka and money and we're giving kindness. We are givers. Women are givers. So, but to be inside the Kabbalah, to kibble taita, to be like Moses who receives, we have to be a receiver. It means to not be doing, not be giving, not be on your devices, not be shopping at the moment, even on your devices on the internet, and to put down, you know, the things that we do, the cooking or the cleaning or the jobs that we do in the world for other people with our employers, not be doing or working, but to be in a state of meditation and to be receiving. Okay, so take a moment because you're watching this video and it's a form of really doing because you're watching and take a deep breath and just close your eyes and imagine that you're surrounded by two triangles of light forming the Jewish star, the shield of David HaMelech of King David. And you've got the two triangles of light spinning around you and you've got your yud k vav k, your head, your body, your middle body, and your legs, all forming the yud k vav k, and you have become the yud k vav k name of Hashem inside the spinning two triangles of light. Hi, Benny. And you want to bring yourself into the center of the two triangles of light. And you want to imagine yourself receiving the light, receiving the answers to questions you may have about your life. So now you're inside that light. And I'd like you to list. First, I'd like you to ask the question in your own mind that's really been plaguing you lately, whatever it is. When will my child be married? When will I get a soulmate? 
when will um, I find my true purpose? Um, how can I come closer to you, Hashem? Whatever it is your question that's plaguing you in your life, that's your true prayer, I'd like you to stand inside the two spinning white light triangles of the Jewish star of David, and you are at the center as the yud ke vav ke name of God, and you're asking Hashem your question. Seeing if someone's calling, that's funny. Someone's calling back. I don't know who it is. Someone wanted into that meditation. I think that might have been Raquel, Raquel Trachtenberg. So I hope you get this video. We called you thinking you were Rachel Hayon, um, but I'll send the video out to you. Okay, so now you're in the light. You're being God's name inside the light shield of David HaMelech, King David. You're asking your question. And someone actually clicked in. I don't know the person. So you're inside the light triangles. You've asked your question and you're just waiting. Now, I'd like you to be open to receive the answer to your question. Whatever that question was, I have to think now of my own question. Okay, so I'm going to share my question, which I didn't even know was my question until I just asked, so I'm going to get a little emotional. I asked, what will happen to the world, to the earth, to the world, to the inhabitants of the world, after Mashiach or the Messiah comes? And I heard that people will be inside the light, and I will be able to leave my true legacy. Um, because be in my legacy because my true purpose is to inspire people to come home which is a beautiful answer to a question I didn't know I had now I don't know what your question was and I don't know what your answer was and I can't ask you to share because I don't know who's going to view this and I don't know what the interaction would be if you could click in but you'll know your own answer, and that's good enough for me. And you can go to that quiet place inside you any time you want. And you can take a deep breath, listen to a minute of music, and just stand inside your David HaMelech shield, your own little Markarara, which could be your own light formation. It looks, it's cool because it's shining off the computer light, so it's like giving you an impression of what I'm saying for your mind. And then this one's really cool because it's like shining the light out from the middle. And I believe we're all beautiful shining souls. And you could ask your question and you could receive your answer any time of any day. That's the power you have in your mind and then just be a receiver to listen for the answers. You could write it down. Take a moment and write it down. Now, this is the thing. I got a lot of information this week about what's going on, not only there in America, but there's been a lot of activity here in Israel as well that we're at the end of days and Things are going to happen economically, and there are decisions to be made. 
uh, and they can't be like dilly dally about it. And it can't be like, well, when I'm comfortable and I'm ready, that's when I'll move back to Eretz Hakodesh, or that's when I'll, you know, decide to do uh, the needful. No, you need to do the needful today. You need to do the needful this week. You need to make your plans and your decisions now. Because the gates are, I wouldn't say closing, but they become narrow and it becomes more difficult to jump through something that's a narrow opening. And we do not want to be in Mitzrayim, which is the narrow place. We don't want to be in an Egypt. We don't want to be in a material place. We don't want to be buried under our possessions. We don't want to be so comfortable that we can't change and be flexible and move with the flow of what we need to be doing in this moment. Uh, when I was leaving for Israel this time, around this uh, seventh year from when I left, um, seven years after I left, I was getting messages in my mind, buy the tickets, buy the tickets now, get the tickets, go put the money in the bank, get the tickets, you have it, this is exactly how much you need to get those tickets, this is how much the tickets, and it was going off in my mind every day for three days until I was like, enough already of this, I will listen to the message in my mind. And I went online and I got like, I think the tickets were 770, which is really funny because I started after Asia Torah and influence from the discovery program to really be a returnee to observant Judaism. I went on the path of Chabad, which is the Lababa Trebi, and he lived at 770 Eastern Parkway, or that's where his synagogue was. So it was funny because the tickets were 770. And even how much the tickets added up to had a meaning for me and it was ridiculous to get over here with seven people and be able to do it. Now, it's never a convenient time to transition, but I'm going to tell you this. The time really is now and whoever's listening in the soul circle that's nervous like but where would we go and where would we land and how would we have time to transition and you know I can't bring my this and my that and I have to pack up a lift and I have to do it through nefesh benefesh whatever it is you're thinking number one you have a place to come to you have a place to land I've already gotten divine instruction to get a bigger place and to include uh, all my friends and to include anybody who comes and not turn one person away. Um, but the time is now. And, you know, my message to you is that if it is possible that these Kabbalists in the ancient days knew that we could travel anywhere we needed to travel in our own consciousness, then they knew through their own faith in their amuna, their faith in God, that anything was possible for them. And therefore, that's what it would require, like a leap of faith, that you believe that you can, that you believe you can do it. Someone really wants in. I don't know if that's Raquel, but if you're watching Raquel, come on. Come on, I can't answer, I'm teaching a class. Uh, but there's some confirmation sounds for you. <laughs> that if you believe you can, and you believe Hashem could do anything God wants to do for you in your life, if you believe you can do it, God will give you whatever you need in order to take that leap of faith. I believe that about anything, but tonight is about the Merkava. It's about a chariot that you build in your mind to receive the light of Torah, to receive the light of God, and to feel close enough to ask for what you need and receive an answer about step-by-step step how to conduct your way to come from step to step to step on the ladder uh, up into God. So now, it is about coming home, 
It's about coming home into your own heart to listen and your own mind to be aware. And it's about believing you really can. So my friend Rachel, I don't know if she's the one viewer on right now. She decided, oh, I'm ready to leave Michigan, <laughs> except she's still got a little apartment with her doggies. And she got a place with her husband in Florida. Of course, right when I was leaving, she got there. And I was leaving for Israel. And then she said, and now the house we bought is worth so much that the profit from selling it, we could just get a place in Israel. And uh, the cousin has a place in Jerusalem for us. Now, how can that be? Just happened all at one time. <coughs> Excuse me. It can happen. It can happen if you desire and have intention to travel to the Holy Land. It can happen if you ask God for support and help. And as long as you're asking God, ask what is available around you to give you the support and help. I have another best friend. Um, I can't say my best friend in Florida anymore because now Rachel moved to Florida. That's a conflict. But my other good friend, Shoshana, on Soul Circle, she was told by her husband, I'm done with what's happening in America. I'm ready to go. Are you with me? And she wasn't quite ready. But I have to say, when would you ever be ready? Was I ready to buy the tickets? Was I ready to take, you know, seven people over on that journey? Was I ready to pack up my four bedroom home and let go of everything and be in 14 suitcases? No, I didn't even have a place to land. But I'm assuring you as my soul circle or whoever else is watching that you would have a place to land. Now, whatever your answers are for your life, and whatever's next for you with your soul. I'm telling you, you know, this is a site for wisdom, but I'm the Jewish mother quintessential. I'm also a big Yenta. All my friends will tell you, it, you can call me Rebbitson if you want to, but I'm telling you that um, it's the end of days and the time is now and there is no being ready. There is no being ready. You declare what you're ready for. You declare, I'm doing this. And then you start packing. Or you start letting go. You let go of the possessions that could hinder you and keep you from moving into the light, you know, with simplicity. It's, it's really okay. Nothing's going to happen that's negative if you let go. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, we all had to let go from being inside our mother's wombs and go down the tunnel of light to get to this other side. And when we die, you know, it should be into 120 in good health, but when we go and we don't take our bodies with us, honey, we also have to let go into the light and come out the other side. And there is another side to come out into. So what I'm saying is be a true Ivri, someone who was Avraham and Sarah and the Jews that followed or the people who weren't into pagan worship and believe in one God and one powerful force that we call the Jewish people today and even all the converts that we call Jewish today and even in the end of days now, everybody whose father was Jewish, they'll be Jewish. and all the people who love, you know, what we stand for in our values in the world of life and education and loving each other as to, you know, love your name, love to your neighbor as to yourself and still hold by the commandments. So I'm saying that he crossed to the other side. He was considered an Ivri. He wasn't called Jewish. Ephraim wasn't called Jewish. He was the father of our people, but he crossed to the other side. So you can do this, and I'm just the messenger, you know? Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the messenger, but you have the power of your own consciousness. You have the power 
of asking and receiving wisdom. You have the power to open a Torah book. You have the power to open your mind. You have the power to ask and receive. And upon asking and receiving that information of what's next for you, even if you feel, oh my gosh, that's just so big, and oh, I can't do that all by myself. Well, you're not alone. You're most certainly not alone because you have God in your life, but you're not alone. So you can take many leaps. Um, what I bless you with is that you'll take a leap of faith um, in yourself and believe um, in your own inner message and light to listen and to know that you know you're able to um, let me say it in Yiddish to chop to uh, absorb and um, receive and take on what the answer is for you from that question we asked take on the practice of calming your mind sitting in a calm place open your mind to ask a question open your mind to receive the wisdom look into a torah book and explore what there is that you enjoy any topic inside it and be your own inner Kabbalist to say, you know what, God? I'm willing to receive the support I need to take the next step to come home. I don't believe you have that much time to wait on that decision. I think circumstances will force you that way. But we don't want to live our lives where circumstances force us to do things. We want to lead, lead an inner directed life in which we're self-generating and we ourselves say this is what i really want this is what i feel you know is best spiritually for my family this is what my true purpose is and i need your help to get to that place you know whatever it is and i'll go step by step with you guiding the way hashem so i bless you my soul circle of powerful women and whoever else is listening, because uh, I don't know who comes on YouTube live. And um, I wanna bless you that you take the moment, even if it's five minutes, and you care about yourself enough to put yourself inside the two triangles of light, make yourself into God's name, the Yud K Vav K. If you don't know Hebrew, look up that as Yud K Vav K. A, and take the shape and look at yourself in your mind as that shape and then spin the triangles around you while asking the question you have for your life receiving the answer and then act on the answer or acknowledge the answer with grace and gratitude I bless you that you take the moment to do that meditation it, whether it's daily or weekly, either way, and do it as much as you need. And then I bless you that you can pick up your tush and let go of your things and really feel uh, that you could enter into a part of your life that is the next phase, um, which is coming home. All good things and God bless.